it was somewhat unseasonably chilly and wet on the morning we left for our wild coast trip, taking us along the N2 through Wilderness, Neisner and Plettenberg Bay among others to our first night stopover at the Storms River Mouth Rest Camp in the Tsitsikama portion of the Garden Route National Park. We're taking a detour from the normal N2 route between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth and we turned off just before the Tsitsikama toll gate and went down the old Blokrans Pass. What a stunning road, it's this indigenous vegetation, there's this river, this is actually the border between the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape. This road was built in the 1880s by Thomas Bain and used to be the main road between Cape Town and Port Elizabeth, now called Kwabaga. Hope I got that pronunciation right. And it's just absolutely stunning. There's a sign saying that the road's closed, but it's not actually. There is signs of some maintenance, but it is a bit overgrown and narrow in parts. We rented a forest cabin for the night and it's really, really comfortable. It's got everything you need and it's right on the water. There's the most amazing view. There's a cattle baron restaurant which is kind of okay and then of course there's the park shop where you can get all your essentials and basics. Bye there. Video. Just taking a little walk along this coastal walkway to the suspension bridge quite early in the morning I'm going early before the crowds arrive very beautiful there's a little beach behind me that you can see and then over there there's a waterfall not much water in it, but it's a waterfall nonetheless. I'm not going to lie, there are a lot of steps on the walk. So a reasonable amount of fitness is necessary, but it's so worth it. There's not actually one suspension bridge, there's a couple. The longer one takes you across the mouth of the Storms River. Quite spectacular being suspended way above the water. You can look out to sea on the one side, of course, and then way up the cliff of the river itself. You can walk further. We didn't because we had to move along, but it would be definitely worth spending a couple of days. And if you do, stop in the cave. It's really quite spectacular. From our home to Coffee Bay is about a 2,000 kilometer return journey along some of the most beautiful coastline you can imagine. A little bit outside Port Alfred on the way to East London is the Fish River Mouth Lighthouse which was built in 1898 and it's been on duty every night ever since. It's a bit of a trek along a dirt road to get there but so well worth it.
Morgan Bay is there behind me. And it's really in a very character-filled place. We're staying at the Mitford Hotel. Actually got a really good last-minute deal on Booking.com. Thanks, Booking.com. Thanks, Mitford Hotel. It's very comfortable. It's basic. A little bit dated, but it's really nice. It's right on the beach. Great views. And there's also a restaurant and a pub. That's the village. Heading back down, have some breakfast, and then head on our way for the rest of the day. We're just at the ferry here to cross the Kai River to go into the Trans Sky. There it comes. been warned about the road but quite honestly although there are a lot of potholes it wasn't as bad as I expected. The worst thing are these triple speed humps which are absolutely not labeled and they are from the devil himself. Cows and goats in the road another thing to watch out for. So my advice don't let it irritate you and just take in the beautiful rural scenery. When I was planning this trip to Coffee Bay, well to the Trans Sky, I asked people's opinion and one of them was go there without preconceived ideas and with an open mind. I think Coffee Bay, that really, really applies. It's a place that's not for everybody, I don't think. It's got certainly a unique character. It's not a resort kind of place where you've got all the facilities and all the modern stuff. There's a lot of backpackers. There are a lot of little B&Bs that are really, really basic. And there are no supermarkets. It's more spaza shops. If you're looking for a decent meal, we had lunch at Zach's Seafood Kitchen every day. And it's not bad at all. The word Coffee Bay or the name Coffee Bay comes from a ship that was wrecked here in the, sometime in the 1800s and it was carrying a cargo of coffee. Coffee beans washed up on the beaches and germinated. I haven't seen any coffee trees, but maybe there are still some. But that's where the name comes from, Coffee Bay, and it's stuck. It's about 10 kilometers from Coffee Bay to Hole in the Wall. I'd read in some blog posts, you need a 4x4 four four and the road's so terrible, but it's actually they're doing maintenance and the road is not bad at all. You definitely don't need a 4x4. Four four. We parked at the Hole in the Wall Hotel for security. There are self-appointed guides who are reluctant to take no for an answer. I found that being firm but friendly was the way to go, and that's my recommendation. It's a very beautiful spot. We had it all to ourselves. We went early and I really do highly recommend making the effort. So impression of Coffee Bay. 
it's very rustic, very, I would almost say hippified, but it's also quite dirty. There's a lot of rubbish around and that's a shame because it's so naturally beautiful. Nice beaches, forests, the whole lot. There's just rubbish everywhere and nobody seems to bother to pick it up. Would I come here again? No, but would I recommend coming here? Yes, for sure. Unfortunately, time caught up with us and we weren't able to make it to Port St. John's this trip. That'll have to be for another visit. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And of course, your subscription is always welcome as usual. See you next time.